Hickok 45 here with a sporting shotgun. And I consider trimming trees a sport. <laughs> yeah, might need another round or two just to make sure the sporting event is complete because of the sporting shotgun you often don't have the capacity there we go that's good enough we'll come back and get that other one yes a sporting shotgun a Benelli Super 90 most of you think of a Super 90 M1 you know Benelli as a uh, combat a police or a defensive shotgun right and quite honestly I kind of do myself uh, although I remember when I bought my uh, defensive Super 90 back in 1989 before some of you were born probably I almost bought a longer barrel for it like this to put on it uh, so I'd have a more versatile complete system if I wanted to go shoot skeet or something uh, I'd have a have a complete system I never did do it it was like Seemed like it was 275 or 300 dollars for that barrel and uh, then the, you know the choke tubes and everything and just a lot of money at the time for me and I just didn't do it never did do it and, uh, and I didn't really miss it because I have other shotguns but anyway this is the sporting version and uh, <laughs> it's pretty interesting we're gonna do a little comparison today uh, with uh, you know the defensive shotguns kind of versus you know the uh, the sporting shotgun or the hunting shotgun a lot of terms you could use and uh, most of you are kind of aware of that but I would just kind of point that out since we can't uh, also got some other firearms lying over there just uh, again as a reminder uh, see if you can guess what those are yeah you're right Remington 870 that's John's you know again kind of a sporting version and then my uh, defensive uh, version of the 870 okay now we could use other terms we could use politically incorrect term combat version couldn't we uh, for civilians it's a defensive shotgun and uh, I hope all of your your firearms like that are defensive right or, or sporting that should cover the gamut <laughs> hope you don't have any offensive firearms uh, uh, you know, or any of those uh, violent firearms. You hear about gun violence, you know, and all that. Uh, I don't have any violent firearms. I don't have any offensive firearms. But, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe if you're going hunting, that's kind of an offensive firearm. I don't know. Another subject. But so anyway, with the 870, you know, you got the hunting version. Uh, and you got the longer version. Generally lower capacity, right? And same with the uh, 590. And we could have, you know, six or ten different shotgun brands out here and have the same, if we had them, <laughs> and you see the same thing. You've got uh, the, the hunting version or the sporting version, and then you've got the defensive version. So what's usually the difference? Well, like you see with this one, you've got the long, uh, longer barrel. It doesn't have to be this long. Also, you got choke tubes. Now, you could have that in a defensive shotgun. A lot of people, it's kind of a why not. Some defensive shotguns have that too, but uh, choke tubes where you can interchange it, you know, for more spread or not. Uh, but definitely on a hunting shotgun or a skeet gun, you, you want that, all right? So you generally gonna have a longer barrel because uh, handiness is not as important as it can be, but uh, you know, with a defensive shotgun, you may be in close quarters in your house, you know, a lot of people have a shotgun as a house gun and you know a barrel like this could be problematic you know banging into walls and doors and that kind of thing so uh, you don't need a long barrel and it with chokes it obviates the need for a longer barrel anyway on a lot of shotguns you'll see uh, I, tell me if I'm wrong you hunters out there bird hunters and that kind of thing but a lot of the reason historically that we had such long shotgun barrels was was because of the choking of the barrel and everything but with screw-in chokes and I guess modern designs and things the, the choke takes care of a lot of that you'll see shotguns that are just like 24 inches in length and barrel and that kind of thing and seem to be kind of an all-purpose you know shotgun sometimes so now this one's pretty long but uh but anyway longer barrel generally and a smaller magazine usually and hunting as you know maybe you don't know that's why we're doing the video and and uh and again i don't really hunt but i know a lot about just i've been around long enough to know a few things even if i don't do it right but generally in the field i know in tennessee and probably most areas 
I think you're limited to two or three rounds. I think it, I think three is kind of the standard. This magazine will hold two. It probably has a plug in it. it I think it would only hold about three anyway, but it holds two, and then you get one in the in the in the chamber. So you're generally limited to three shots in a hunting shotgun. I think. I think even if it's uh, birds, whether it's rabbit hunting, whatever you're doing. So y'all can elaborate on that. Some of you hunters, there may be different states and different uh, types of hunting where you know there's different requirements. But generally, I think three is kind of the, the shot uh, number there. And uh, so you got a shorter magazine, lower capacity. Okay, you generally do not have a pistol grip. All right, now as this one doesn't. Uh, now this one did. This is again the defensive model. It had a pistol grip when I bought it and I changed it out because I don't like a pistol grip on any shotgun. It's just in the way for me. Now it's better when you're actually got it up there and you're shooting it, kind of like an AR-15, you know, you get a good grip on it, but I don't know, it's just not as handy affair. I, I do not like a pistol grip, but this, this shotgun should have one on it. It came with one on, a really nice one. <laughs> so I took it off and put a less expensive stock on it just because I like it better. So imagine there being a pistol grip there, all right? But there's not. So more, you see, you got more capacity. Look at that, man, that tube goes all the way out, almost to the end of the barrel. Because it's a defensive shotgun. So the more ammo, you know, the better. Like kind of a why not? Why have the magazine stop here? You know, if it's uh, for defense, uh, you're probably not gonna need more than a couple with a shotgun, but it's like a why not? It's like with a handgun, okay? Uh, so let's just take a couple shots with which one you want. Let's shoot this one again. This is a this is pretty neat. The, the old Super 90. I uh, I've always liked the Super 90. It's a uh, it's a different kind of animal. These are inertia driven bolts. These old M1 Super 90s. So that it's you get a lot of recoil out of them, no doubt about it. There's no gas system like on some of the newer uh, Benelli's, like the M4. And I think it's the M3 that has a pump. It, it, you can either pump or it, it's uh, semi-auto and it's kind of replaced I guess the M1 in some ways but uh, the simplicity of these uh, is still attractive no doubt about that you know what we've got some things to shoot here let's go ahead and smoke a little pot <laughs> oh my gosh at that range uh, and it's got kind of a see it's not a skeet choke in I think it's an improved cylinder it comes with three uh, chokes, I believe full choke, uh, modified and improved cylinder, I think is what it comes with. But it has three screw in chokes, the other two are on the table there. Got one round left, so let's put it on that paper target. <laughs> yeah, man, went right through there. I couldn't believe it. So, three shots, there you go. And that's kind of the reason uh, people are attracted. Say I'm a hunter and I have this shotgun, or one like this, or two or three like this for my hunting escapades and adventures, but I, I really like a shotgun. I feel very comfortable with a shotgun, more so than a handgun or even a rifle, maybe for, uh, you know, for home defense. Well, things is that I already discussed. This, this is not the ideal shotgun. It would work, you know? You can always do worse than any shotgun is, is pretty good for a defensive uh, firearm. But, you know, this one is better. Look at that, it's handier, shorter barrel, and uh, more capacity. Let's just load the thing up. You want to? There we go. And that's why you might choose something like this. Now, it may not be a Benelli, but uh, in whatever version. You know, when you go back to even the old uh, 1897 pump shotgun, there was a kind of a military version of it, right? Cut down uh, as a trench gun for military use. Same with the Model 12 and... I think the 1200, the 870, those things were carried in Vietnam, and I think the Model 12 as well, a shorter version with a heat shield on them, I think a lot of them, and, you know, shorter, handier version of it. So, combat shotgun, a defensive shotgun, you know, in this configuration, uh, that's what you get. You know what, I'm not going to shoot that. Well, yeah, I will. No, I'm going to wait on that. Uh, let's shoot a bucket. Let's kick the bucket. <laughs> Another bucket. One is down, but he's not out. Now you <laughs> roll him. Let's roll him again. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a show. 
Uh, the other thing about a defensive shotgun, because it holds more than two or three rounds, let's face it, no matter what you're shooting, if it just holds two or three rounds, it's, it's kind of limiting. Uh, it's just more fun. You know? And most of us shoot just for fun. The most of our, it, well, most of our shooting is for fun, safety on. And so, you know, having five or six or seven is a little bit better. I'm gonna grab some ammo there. So that's one reason. It's not that all of us think we're going into combat next week that we buy shotguns like this. It's just that if we're gonna shoot a shotgun and, and enjoy it, uh, like I do a lot, <laughs> have slug fests and all that sort of thing, it's like, why not have one that's a little handier? Because, you know, they're just as accurate as far as shooting slugs and, and everything, and they're more fun. Be like if you had a revolver, because, you know, they're all big old, you know, firearms. Be like having a good sized revolver uh, that holds two or three rounds versus holding six or seven. You know, it's like, why? So if you can get a few more rounds, it's worth it. Oh boy. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> Let's shoot a stop sign. No oh boy. That's bird shot. Notice what the bird shot does to that. Even on the cowboy down there, which is pretty far away. You see it, it moved that big heavy cowboy. And I'm not gonna get into a big discussion about bird shot. Uh, ideally, it's not the best offensive load, but at across the room, there's hardly any difference. You see on that stop sign, which is heavy also, it knocked the heck out of it. And that's even further, that's across two rooms. So uh, anything out of a 12 gauge, is uh, powerful stuff, okay? So, what was I saying? Why did I put that in there? I don't want that in there. I have uh, something on my mind here that I want to, uh, yeah, I want something a little warmer. I want some buckshot, okay. So, uh, yeah, you get, a, you get a shorter gun, you get more capacity generally, and uh, you get a firearm also, I should point out, that's probably not legal for hunting, all right? Keep that in mind. Uh, so you are limited. It, it, it never really affects me because I don't hunt and almost all of my shotguns are, are this configuration. So I really can't take them hunting unless I put a plug in the, in the uh, magazine to limit the uh, capacity. So generally it's not enough just to put two rounds in. If you're uh, stopped by the game warden, he's going to want to look and see or she and uh, see that the capacity is actually just a couple or three rounds. So you have to have a plug, and a lot of shotguns, all of them almost, come with a plug in there for that reason. Okay, this, this uh, pot has a couple of old empty spray cans in it, so I thought we might get an interesting uh, outcome here. <laughs> well, we got mostly pot smoke, but <laughs> what else? All right, so we got uh, double hot buck. Cowboy. Yeah, buddy. Woo, let's hit this target here, too. <laughs> That's number, I think it was number four. I'll double check. I'm going to go over there and see if we can hear it on the gong. I don't really want to take my ears out, but I'm going to shoot at the gong, see if we hear it. Yeah, I hear it a little bit. I saw it you know, sprinkle around him. So That's, uh, again, 80 yards. Uh, and... You know, so stuff travels further than a lot of people do think out of a short barrel so we're just doing a lot of silly stuff here i know it's kind of random uh but i wanted to kind of just it, it dawned on me that i have this gun i saw this online and we have uh both guns in the 870 and some people might not be really aware uh uh, it's kind of hopefully a little education here the difference you know what a hunting shotgun a sporting shotgun kind of involves you want something that holds two or three rounds that's why one of the most popular sporting shotguns for shooting clay sporting clays clay pigeons even bird hunting i guess trap and all that is an over and under or a, or a side by side but the over and under i think kind of rules and guess how many it holds it has two barrels two chambers do the math yep holds two rounds and it's one of the most popular because capacity is not an issue, all right? You know, and in hunting, it's generally not an issue. Right, so two or three rounds is, is uh, enough. So hunting shotgun, lower capacity, 
usually longer barrel. Chokes become even more important, depending on what you're doing, you know, so you can adjust, change those out. And, uh, you know, pistol grips, you know, we're gonna be rare to see a pistol grip. Now I know this is kind of a pistol grip stock, but I'm talking about a real pistol grip uh, on, a, on a sporting shotgun, a hunting shotgun, okay? So, and what else? And of course this is a three inch chamber or two and three quarter. Uh, semi-automatic, you know, a lot of sporting shotguns, hunting shotguns are not semi-automatic. Some are, some are pump, you know, kind of the same deal though. Uh, that's what you get. And again, us just hardcore shooters, we tend to favor these sorts of things because <laughs> they're just a lot of fun. Let's shoot this thing again. I'll tell you what we could do. Let's try a slug in this sporting shotgun because you can do that. You really can. It's got an open enough uh, choke in it to shoot slugs. You don't want to shoot slugs if you got like a full choke or something. And uh, this one's pretty open. Okay, it's got the, the widest choke in it. All right. Let's just, let's just shoot several. One thing about it, that rib makes it really nice for sighting down that barrel. <laughs> I actually took a shot with, oh, I forgot, low capacity. <laughs> I was trying to cram more in. Let's go over there and wake up the gong with this sporting shotgun. Oh man, it's like sighting a rifle. <laughs> cool, let's hit him again. No, let's try a buffalo. And a ram. My favorite target. <laughs> So we got a lot of game there with just three shots, didn't we? We got a, uh, a gong and, and we got a buffalo and a ram or sheep. I think that's actually a bighorn sheep. All right, now we're loaded again, what, with two? Let's, uh, I'm not real comfortable where to hold, but let's try that pig. Yeah, <laughs> if you can see down that down that barrel, it is like sighting down a rifle almost. That uh, you got a nice little red dot up there, and go uh, or red bead, and you got that rib. I always have liked a ribbed uh, barrel on a shotgun, I th probably because of my big head and this being so big. It uh, you know, I I don't have to get down as far on the stock. It seems like sometimes. So anyway, this thing could double. Uh, to do anything you want. And of course, hunting shotgun, you would use a slug. I would have no problem taking that thing into the woods to uh, hunt deer with it, with a slug. Uh, probably shoot it as well as that one. Uh, that one doesn't have the rib, but you know, this is the one we used in that old video shooting at what, 230 yards with shotgun slugs, like way over there's in a winter day. And, uh, and just, just messing with it and testing the accuracy and everything. And it's just amazing out of a smooth bore how well they, they shoot sometimes. We've got a target left, so we better shoot that. Oh, so let's shoot some, some hot stuff here. Uh, not slugs, uh, but some double lot buck. You know, these are nine pellet double lot buck, okay? Yeah, we've got a coffin or something there we can shoot. Again, look at the spread. Which one do we want to shoot? Well, let's put these in the uh, short one here. Safety on. And pump a few of these out. It's one of the beauties of uh, shotgunning is there's so many different sorts of uh, slugs and, and uh, you know shells available for all kinds of purposes. There are a lot of specialty shells out there too, as y'all probably know. So let's see what happens on that coffin. Wow, and that's a heavy piece of steel. Let's try the uh, other uh, tombstone. <laughs> the cowboy. Wow, oh, a cinder block. <laughs> that's a nine pellet uh, double odd buck. Uh, that, is, that is a piece of artillery, okay? That's what you have when you have a shotgun, either one of them, okay? Either one of them. Uh, so, let's shoot this one one more time with something. I think I'm, a, I'm just in the mood to shoot a couple slugs. Is that all right? Uh, so anything else that you all wanted to add? Uh, 
the thing I forgot to, to mention, this is not everything you want to know about this, but just thought I would uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, it's probably something I'm not thinking about. One thing about a hunting or a sporting shotgun, they tend to, not necessarily what you see on the table, but they tend to be more attractive shotguns, I guess. You know, if someone's going to get a hunting shotgun, a sporting shotgun, again, sporting can cover a lot of things, you know, sporting clay, shooting clay pigeons or hunting, whatever. But uh, you're more likely to get a nice piece of wood, aren't you? Now, the, the Benelli's are just famous for being, you know, looking like this. They're really functional, reliable, you know, great shotguns. But then a lot of shotguns that are for hunting, uh, although we've gotten a lot more practical, I think, in recent decades, you go look at a lot of the nice hunting shotguns and they look like this, you know, or they're camo or whatever. They're not beautiful walnut necessarily, but by the same token, a lot of them are, especially over and unders. And so there's just a, there's maybe more pride and just, you know, you just want a really nice firearm. Whereas for a good old defensive shotgun, it's kind of like a, you know, like a Glock or an M&P or kind of like a defensive pistol. We don't really care as much. <laughs> we just want something reliable and durable. Um, often they're, they're just black on black with wood and, you know, and polymer. And, and we just want something that works really well. Uh, you bang it around and not worry about it. And for hunting, you get some of that because if you're out traipsing around the woods and the bad weather and everything, you don't always want a really nice piece of wood, probably. An heirloom, just depends. So we got slugs. I was just in the mood to do a little more hunting. I'm sorry. And I'm a, you know that buffalo on the right sometimes just will not fall. Let's see if we can get him down. All right, hit that other ram, maybe. <laughs> yeah, now I feel better. I'll be able to enjoy my dinner. I'm gonna put two more since I have them in my pocket. Is that all right? And what am I gonna shoot? I wanna shoot uh, this, this uh, stop sign. <laughs> you think I would do that? That was a joke. Let's uh, let's try, let's do the gong with one of these. <laughs> Look at him move. Now I've got one more shell, safety's on. And this guy right here thinks he's gonna get away, but he's not. We're gonna finish him off, and then we'll let you all go to dinner. How's that? All right. Okay, he's gonna splatter. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> well, one thing I noticed about this that with my Benelli, the uh, with my Benelli, it it took it a while to break in on uh, field loads, and uh, I have an M4 same way. It's gotten to where it's pretty reliable with with field just lighter field loads, and more reliable with them. Uh, initially, it wanted to hang up, but I think it's okay now. That one it took six months to a year before I trusted it because I used to shoot competition with it. Uh, I'm, I'm talking like USPSA competition and knockdown targets and that kind of thing. And I had to load a special load for it that was a little heavier than field loads, but but not quite double out buck because you kind of you're disadvantaging yourself with really hot ammo because it was all about speed and 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 then accuracy and everything. So I had to get, I got into actual shotgun shell reloading for the first time in my life to to tailor a load that would function reliably but wasn't too hot and. Uh, and so, but it took it a while. Uh, this one has not uh, missed a beat with this, this, these field loads been shooting. So it's, it's functioned just, just fine. So anyway, uh, uh, I guess the video is kind of about this shotgun, but it's, it's about all these guns and the differences. And, uh, you know, whether you want a defensive shotgun or you want a sporting hunting slash hunting shotgun, you know, and then some can fill both roles. Uh, like I said, I, I was really interested at one point in getting a, this barrel and, and having it available to put on this shotgun so it would be more versatile. And I have done, I was, I was going to do it in a video, I well, why not, you believe me, right? Uh, you believe me, anything I tell you, right? This barrel does work on that shotgun. I took it off and put it on there and fired it, okay? It's the same, you know, 
barrel. You just have to take this off, take that screw out, that off the barrel, the magazine nut, you know, both of them, take it and put it right in there. It fits just like it fits on this shotgun and works. So, uh, uh, might be an option if you're a Benelli fan, a Super 90 fan, or, or whatever. Just have a different barrel. Not that it's really needed. I think most of the newer, even defensive shotguns, a lot of them have an actual uh, screw-in choke capability, so that makes it more versatile right there. So if you did want to hunt, and I don't know, not many people hunt with a firearm that looks like this, I guess, but you could. But if you're able to put in a screw-in choke and put a full choke in it or different chokes, it, it does give you more uh, versatility in the field. So, so there you go. They generally come, I think it's cylinder bore, you know, cylinder choke. And I thought it said on there. But most shotguns like this are just cylinder bore, which is open, pretty, pretty open, okay? So there you go, uh, hunting shotgun versus just defensive shotgun, or again, combat shotgun, you know. At least uh, these are very, very popular uh, implements in war, in battle, you know. You can go all the way back through the history of uh, the United States, and in battle, there was a shotgun employed, and it was probably something of this length, or like the 870, uh, possibly with a heat shield, maybe higher capacity, and, but still basically the same same firearm as, you know, somebody back home was using in the field hunting dove, you know. So, anyway, just for what it's worth, not a lot. I don't expect you to send many checks for that, but we appreciate you coming by to watch. We always do. And uh, don't forget to check out uh, all the people that support us and uh, all the, the Hickok 45 uh, shop, you know, with bunker branding and T-shirts and all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you later, probably. Life is good. Doing a little spring training as I do here on the compound often. Uh, since I've got you here, I want to remind you to check out our friends over at SDI and Talon Grips. SDI is a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. That's SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. Go to sdi.edu for more information. Talon Grips is a company that makes grips. Big surprise there, right? Uh, you can check them out at talongungrips.com. They make various types of grips for uh, various types of firearms that go over your existing grips. You go to the website, talongungrips.com, and, uh, and see what all they have over there. We appreciate them and their support, and uh, we hope that you support the companies that, that support us. Also, while you are on the internet, which I assume you are at this time, uh, go to hickok45.com and check out everything we have over there. We have links to all of our social media, our merchandise, which you can find also at bunkerbranding.com. We have t-shirts and hats and mugs and, and drink koozies and, and different things like that. On social media, there is Hickok V Real Hickok45 on Instagram, Hickok45 on Twitter, Hickok45 on Facebook. Uh, there's also a page I have called John underscore Hickok 45 on Instagram and John Hickok on Facebook. So please check all that stuff out when you get a chance. Uh, but, you know, watch some more videos. Have fun out there. Talk to you guys later.